What's up YouTube, Seth Sanchez here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a remote camera for baseball. It's going to be for an overhead shot. Um, let's just jump right into it. So first off, for camera and lens, I'm going to be using the Canon 1DX and a 300mm 2.8 IS Mark II. Um, if you can't afford it or you don't have it, don't worry about it. You can use any lens for this. This is just what I'll be using. Um, if you guys have any questions about other lenses, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it for you guys. But for me, this is what I'll be using. And next up, we're going to be using two uh, Pocket Wizard Multimaxes. Uh, you can use the Plus 3s. Uh, I'm not sure what the range comparison is between the Multimaxes and the Plus 3s, to be honest. But I'm sure you can look it up online. But for me, I don't know. I apologize for that. But either one will work fine for you. And up next, we got a little isolation bar from Pocket Wizard as well. It's just a plastic little pole that you can have two, three inches, and you just connect it to the other one. And it, you, once you have it like this, you just connect it to the back of uh, your Pocket Wizard. And then you connect it to the back of a super clamp. And then you tighten it. And then you put this onto a pole next to the camera. And then you put the piece that connects from the pocket wizard into the camera port. And then you're solid. And what this does is it keeps it away from metal. And it gives you a better signal range. And opposed to having the pocket wizard just on top of the hot shoe of the camera. This will just give you, like I said, a better signal range and it keeps it away from metal. You're still going to get errors and issues at most stadiums. I mean, even with this setup, I still get it where it's not going to go off sometimes and there's really nothing you can do about it. It's just hit or miss. And that leads me to the next point about this whole entire setup with remote usage. You don't ever want to rely on the remote camera as your primary camera. It's there just in case and if you get a cool shot from it, awesome. But you always want to have your primary camera on you because if you rely on this, it's just not gonna end well. You don't wanna rely on a remote camera. That's why I always recommend having at least two camera bodies so that you can have your own with you and then the remote camera as a remote camera. Sometimes even three, if you can get three, awesome. You don't have to have the best of the best. I mean, if you can't afford it, go for it. Uh, if you can't, don't worry about it. Just shoot with what you got. Um, up next, we got this out of the way. We're gonna be using gaffer tape, nothing special there. That's just to tape down the focus ring so that we won't get any you know, uh, shifting and focus issues or if someone bumps into it or vibrations or anything like that. But also, even if you do gaffer tape down the focus ring, be very cautious because you, you got to show up hours early to set up the remote camera because if you don't and you just bring it out into heat or cold or wherever environment you're in, whether you're shooting ice hockey or just outdoor baseball like this, you're going to have issues where the lens will shift focus from the, from the temperature. You need to let the camera or you got to let the lens shift and adjust to the temperature wherever you are and even if you do you still might get that issue and you just got to be cautious and check on it if you can if you're going to put it somewhere where you're not able to get access to it during the game for like pro events or even college i mean there's nothing you really do it except be prepared and get there hours early on in and just let the lens adjust to the temperature and again reasons like that are why you do not want to rely on a remote camera because stuff like that can happen and you got to expect it so up next is a Manfrotto 410 Junior Geared Head. This little fancy guy is a mandatory thing for something as heavy as a 300mm 2.8. I actually didn't know about this until I watched Mark J. Terrell's video showing how to set up a pro body with a 300, something as heavy as that. He mentioned this, and I had a nice ball head, and he was showing why a ball head doesn't do you any good for tilted shots where like the camera is actually tilted down a little bit instead of up like regular. If you're doing you know, a normal view like this as a remote, you're fine. But if you're gonna tilt it down a little bit, then I would highly recommend using the geared head. It's a great tool. It runs for about 280, I think, for the junior geared head. This is the 410 model, remember that. And there is another one that's uh, you know, graded to do better weight for like heavier lenses, like a 600, 500, 400. But if you're not using those as remotes, then I just get this, it's perfectly fine. And I'll show you how it works once we start setting it up the remote. And then we have another super clamp right here. This is just going to attach to the geared head on the bottom and then clamp on to the railing. Nothing fancy here. And then the last thing is you got a Manfrotto Magic Arm. This is the one with, uh, let's see here, we've got the knob on the side and just a regular clamp for one part. It will clamp onto the railing. And then this part's going to connect down to the back of the camera, the actual body, not the lens. This is just for extra safety. And for the last part of safety, we just have some. Uh, safety cables right here. Nothing fancy again, just something you've got to have just for safety because the last thing you want to happen is for the camera to fall over on the edge and fall and even, worst case scenario, kill someone or injure someone. You don't want that to happen. The number one thing that you need to know and be aware of is safety and ask for permission before setting up a remote camera. You don't want to just waltz in somewhere, especially pro level or 
minor league like we're going to be doing today and just set it up without asking anyone. So we're going to jump into showing you how to set it all up and we'll get right into that right now. Okay, so the first thing you guys want to do is you're going to attach your geared head onto your super clamp right here and we're going to just put it on wherever you're going to be at. If you're doing overhead, um, you're going to attach it onto a railing right here and then make sure it's on there very, very tightly. Make sure everything is all on there as tight as it can be. Make sure it ain't going anywhere. And that's the first step. Okay, so next thing you're gonna do, before even thinking about putting the camera on top of this right here, I've, I've already gone ahead and done the safety cables, but you always wanna safety cable your camera and lens before even putting this something overhead like this because if you try to set it up, no matter how careful you may be, it could fall over and again, kill someone even if it doesn't, they're gonna find out about it and they will not let you do it ever again. So always bring the safety cable and set it up. I always wrap it around the lens strap right here and then there's a camera strap on here as well. It goes on both over here and then both on the other end as well. So it ain't going anywhere. So once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and put it on and it might be a little tight and kind of difficult because it, as you can see it's very on there and it's not gonna really let me lift it up as much. But once you've got it all set up, you're just gonna go ahead and clip it. Hear the clipping noise make sure it's on there safely and there we go okay so the next step for you guys is we're going to use that magic arm that I showed you guys so you're going to put the super clamp on next to the railing right here as close as you can next to the geared head you're just going to make sure that that's twisted on there nice and well all the knobs and everything and then as you can see we got the knob on the opposite side right over here we're just going to tighten that up once you've put in the part that attaches to the camera body up here as well. You want to make sure that's tightened up nice and well. All the knobs are good as well. It's kind of tricky when you have it all set up like this. It's on like the opposite end and everything, but make sure everything's as tight as it can be. And then once you're done with the part that connects up here to the bottom of the camera, tighten the knob down here. And this way you've got one and two ways to protect this from falling. And I can almost guarantee that this is not going anywhere just without this stuff, but you want to make damn sure that it's not going anywhere, if, especially if you're using something that expensive, and most importantly, so that you don't harm anyone or kill anyone. Okay, so the next thing you guys want to do is you want to make sure that if you're using the Multimaxes, I'm not sure how to do it with the Plus 3s. You, again, you guys can look this up, but if you're using a Multimax, you want to reset the Multimaxes, both of them, each time before an event when you set it up as a remote just to you know be safe and make sure there's not any signal issues or anything like that and how you do it is you just hold down the C and turn it on and you'll get this screen right here and it resets it and that's it okay next the one of the last steps you want to do again we're gonna safety cable this is a second safety cable that we have it's gonna go on to the pocket wizard because this is gonna be going over the edge over here and you want to have this connected to the isolation bar that I mentioned earlier and it's going to be connected to the super clamp right here and before you set it over there you want to make sure everything's working like I said earlier you want to reset it when you before you turn it on um, if you're using multi-max it doesn't matter what channel you're using I just keep it on channel 17 for A and it, this one is obviously going to be on the receiving mode which is on the side here and if you don't have this model the other pocket wizards are easy to figure out and yeah, so before you set it over the edge, you want to have the safety cable, and we're going to set it over the edge right now. Okay, so the last step is we're going to clamp this on to this railing right here at the edge. And I honestly, I would put it down right here, but the cord that's connected to the camera can't reach it, unfortunately. So we're just going to make do and put it over here on the edge. But honestly, as long as you can keep it as close and as uh, much as in your view when you're on the field as possible, you're going to get the best results that you can at the stadium. All right, so we're going to attach it down here. Obviously, be very, very cautious and very careful. Make sure it's on there good. Solid. And you can see it is not going anywhere. And make sure everything's as tight as it can be. And honestly, I go down here and then turn it off beforehand so I don't waste battery. And moments before the game starts, I'm going to do some checking on checking up on it to make sure everything's going to be working properly and you want to do that but you want to test it so like right now I'm going to be going down there and testing it by using my tra the, the other remote that I have and pushing the button to make sure it's all working properly and then I'll come back up here and check the images to make sure everything's right and once that's set up I turn it off 
and then once the game's about to start, a little a few, you know, a handful of minutes beforehand, I'll turn the camera back on and make sure everything's working properly. Okay, so one of the final steps you want to do, obviously, is you want to put your camera aimed at where you want it to be at. So how you do that with the gear head is you just use these, there's three knobs right here that you can see. And you can just adjust them to wherever you want. So as you can see on this camera, it's shifting towards the right, or you can make it go towards the left. And when you let go, it's going to be at where it's going to be at. Unlike a ball head, where if you, you move it to where you want it, you let go, it'll eventually start to shift down slowly. And that's just the downfall of using a ball head. So with this, you can just twist these knobs and precise it at where you want it to be at. So we're going to twist it over here, twist it this way a little bit. And you want to obviously, you know, focus in where you want it to be at. I use the um, back of the LCD screen, the live view, to focus it. That's just me, though. You know, however you want to do it, it works for you. You just adjust it until it's correct where you want it to be at. And we're done. Okay, guys, and obviously the final step for this is going to be testing it out and make sure it works. Like I said, you want to go down on the field if it's overhead and make sure it's working from down there by going in different areas that you would be shooting at normally and test it. But for now, we're just going to test it up here so you guys can get the general idea of how this all works. And for settings, use AV mode. You can do manual if it's going to be consistent lighting. If you're shooting a night game and you get there, it's at night. Shoot it on manual. Um, I'm using AV mode. Uh, it's all personal preference and whatever works best for you. As far as ISO goes, I personally like to change it. but. People use auto ISO, but I really don't like doing that because if teams have white, the camera just flips out and it'll just go all over the place. I've had it happen to me. If there's a magic trick to, on how to do that properly, please tell me because I don't know how to do it. I've never heard of a way to correct that kind of thing with AV mode because a camera, I don't like the, having the camera do what it thinks it should do. I like to tell the camera what it should do. Um, that's why manual's always great, but for this, I, I will use AV mode, but never auto ISO. As far as... Um, your aperture goes, I keep it at 4.0 and during the daytime, um, I'll go higher. Uh, sometimes at nighttime, I will bring it down to 3.5 because that's as high as I can get away with, with keeping a shutter speed around, you know, 500 to 800. I like to keep it around 800th of a second. You can go a little bit lower, maybe 640th or 500th, but you're kind of pushing your luck there. 800th is where it's solid. That's what you want to keep it at. Otherwise, you're going to get some blurry shots. Um, and yeah, so the, for nighttime I keep it at 3.5 because that's as high as I can get it because you want more in focus here, especially for overhead kind of shots and with a longer glass like that, your depth of field becomes more thinner. So you want to be able to make sure that you're going to get more in focus wherever you have it at. So once you're pre-focused and everything's all set up like this, you want to test it out and we're good to go. Setting up a remote camera can get you some awesome shots. Um, it's great. I love doing it. The whole reason I bought the 300, like if you guys saw my previous video, was for remote usage. Um, I've only been able to use it for about three games so far. Um, the things I've gotten are pretty standard. Some cool stuff here and there, but I'm just looking forward to the future and getting some awesome shots with it. And not just for baseball, but for hockey, for basketball, for even water polo. You can use remotes for anything. Um, it can range from a 400 to a 600 to a 300 millimeter. You can use 2470s wide, zoom, it doesn't matter. You can find a way to use a remote in awesome ways. But remember, the most important thing is to number one, be safe about it, do it properly, approach the person in charge who has the ability to give you the access and permission to do this, and just be safe about it. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, be sure to leave comments in the section below, and subscribe, and like the video, please. It helps me out. If you guys have any questions, just ask me. See you guys in the next video.